We call this meeting to order. Before we proceed with the regular proceedings of the meeting, I think that we all are very aware that we had a significant loss to our nation. We had a significant loss to our city. And we are. Uh, I wanted to make sure that we made some time to just remember Linda Brown. As I was reading through many of the comments that people said, um, it's pretty interesting to see how nationwide Linda Brown was recognized for the courage of being a little girl and having her father stand up for her in the middle of a significant battle of segregation in our nation. And by one babe, we have the significant change that we have today. And I just want to encourage all of us that are out in the community to just remember that the impact that we can all have in the lives of others and to figure out how we're going to use that to empower others as we move forward. If we could have a second of silence just to remember Linda Brown. Thank you. We now proceed with the invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. We will now pay attention to Mr. Cohen, who will introduce Mr. Gary Rotten. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight's invocation is being given by Gary Roten. He was the pastor of Maranatha Baptist Church from 1988 to 2012. He's currently the president of Christians for Life and a board member of the Topeka Christian Chamber of Commerce. He's also the interim pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church. Pastor Gary. That's right. Jesus, thank you for this opportunity that we can come before uh, this group and, and, and openly pray to you. We thank you, Lord, for that. I know in your word you share about the structure of the family and you share about the structure and the authority of the church and you share about the structure and the authority of government and your blessings are on all of that. So I pray, Lord, that if we come before this structure and the authority that comes from the Topeka City Council, that in times of challenges and times of struggles, and, but also times where good, important decisions need to be made, that you will grant wisdom to this group, that decisions made will be beneficial to citizens like myself and to others. I pray, Lord, that as you bless this group, that also the structure of families that might be representative among these groups and those in attendance, that on this, this evening, that you recognize there may be challenges going on, not only in their Topeka, uh, this meeting today, but also in their personal lives. The Lord, as I pray for the wisdom to grant help with the decisions of this body, of this government officials, the same wisdom, I pray, Lord, that you will show that is available to them in their personal lives whether it's a child that they're having a, a, a challenge with, or maybe in a marriage that's hit, hitting a couple bumps in the road, that you are also available to be cried out and prayed to in the midst of those circumstances also. So bless this time together as a meeting with the wisdom and the decisions they will make. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have no proclamations tonight. We don't have any presentations. At this point, we proceed with the roll call. Mayor De Laysa? Here. Council members Hiller? Here. Clear? Here. Ortiz? Here. Emerson? Here. Padilla? Here. Jensen? Mays? Here. Cohen? Here. And Leslie? Here. Uh, Deputy Mayor Jensen is, we're missing his present at this point in time. He is attending the wake of a family member. He will be here shortly. We now proceed with appointments if the clerk would read. 
A is a board appointment recommending the reappointment of Scott Clemens to the Topeka Metropolitan Transit Authority for a term ending May 1, 2022. Do we have motion, discussion with regards to this appointment? So moved. We have a motion made by Councilman Mays. Second. Second by Councilman Emerson. Are there any comments? Seeing none, uh, we proceed with the voting. The mayor doesn't vote. We have eight yes. Eight having voting yes, the motion passes. It, I don't see Mr. Tummins in the crowd. Is he here to be recognized? Okay. We appreciate his service. It's great to see you here, Ms. Duffy. We now proceed with the consent agenda, if the clerk would read. A, our minutes of the regular meeting of March 20, 2018, and there is a list of open after midnight applications. Staff is recommending approval. What is the pleasure of the body? I'll move to approve. Councilman Cohen mo makes, makes a motion. Second. Councilman Padilla seconds. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we proceed with the voting. Mr. Padilla. We have nine yes. Nine having voting yes. The consent agenda passes. We now move into the action items if the clerk would read. A is a public hearing concerning a plan of finance for the issuance by the city of Wichita, Kansas, the issuer of one or more series of its health care facilities revenue bonds issued under authority KSA 121740FC in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $36 million and a resolution authorized approving the issuance by the city of, of Wichita, Kansas of its health care facilities revenue bonds for the purpose of financing and refinancing the acquisition, construction, improvement and equipping of an existing senior living facilities located in the city of Topeka, Kansas. City Manager. Mayor, um, Mr. Rick Wright from Gilmore and Bell is here tonight if there are questions regarding this particular agenda item. And uh, I guess that's all we have to add at this point. It's a procedural item. Does the council have any questions for Mr. Wright that you would like to address? This is a, a bond issue. It's a pass through. I think that we all have the information in our documents, but I just did, I wanted to provide to see if anybody had any questions. Seeing none, um, what is the pleasure of the body? Move approval. Councilman Emerson moves approval. Come. Should we have a public hearing? Oh, we do need to have, thank you very much. We do need to have a public hearing. At this point, we open up public hearing so that anybody that is in favor or against this project can go ahead and stand up and speak. I will ask again if there's anybody interested in speaking. Asking a third time. <coughs> Seeing nobody, I guess at this point in time, the public hearing is closed. So now we have a motion made by Councilman Emerson. We have a second made by Councilwoman Clear. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, we proceed with the voting. We have nine yes. Nine having voting yes, the motion passes. Thank you for being here um, to represent Presbyterian Manor. <clears throat> we now move to item B, resolution to support the elimination of human trafficking, if the clerk would read. B is a resolution introduced by Council Member Michael Lesser in support of eliminating human trafficking. <clears throat> City Manager. Yes, Mayor. In this particular issue, we're working with Councilman Lesser as far as introduction, but we've been working with the Topeka Rescue Mission on this issue, and we have activities planned for Thursday. Uh, but at this point, I'll turn it over to the body. Councilman Lesser. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, I, I'm honored to uh, 
have been asked to, to help with this resolution um, in uh, uh, the elimination of human trafficking. And, and, and uh, I also want to point out that um, Council, Member, Council Member Clear has also been uh, very active um, um, on this topic for a number of years. It first came to my attention um, actually a couple years ago um, in working with, with, with Barry Feeker in regards to um, some of the atrocities that, that are actually going on in our community in, in regards to this. Um, so uh, as uh, City Manager Trout said, we we're going to have a, a, a joint um, press conference on Thursday and uh, a lot more information on that. So I, I'm just honored to, to have the opportunity to, to bring this resolution because it, it, it is truly um, uh, something we need to uh, declare war on. Absolutely. Um, I would like to invite uh, Reverend Barry Feeker, who is here with us, to come and maybe say a few words to the body. I will say for myself, it was wonderful when he and I started talking about this and getting the council members invested in the process. Uh, it's, as everybody knows, we have the mayor's um, task force against sexual and domestic violence, and one of the exciting parts is the fact that this is one of those areas in which when you dig a little bit deeper, you find out that there's a deeper story. And we as a community are very proud to stand beside Reverend Feeker, um, as I call him, Papa Barry, and just continue this war. <laughs> And being a city that is known, like we spoke about earlier, about being the, the birth of freedom in this nation. So, Madam Mayor, thank you, uh, city manager and uh, council members. I think tonight that you have the opportunity to do something very historical that uh, many years from now we'll have the uh, opportunity to be looked on as a, a milestone in not only the city and county, but what's going to possibly happen in this nation. February 1st uh, of this year, National Freedom Day. 70th year, um, commemorating uh, 1865 when Abraham Lincoln signed a resolution to establish the 13th, the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery, slavery. The Kansas House and Senate, both on that same day, declared war on human trafficking in Kansas, making this the first state in the nation to take seriously this issue of modern day slavery. And so Topeka uh, in Shawnee County um, has the opportunity now to do the same thing, to be the first city and county in the United States to uh, engage in a long-term battle that we should have been engaged in a long time ago uh, to say that uh, we do not believe this is right. We do want to do something about it, and we want to come together as a city and as a county and hopefully join with other cities and counties throughout the state of Kansas and hopefully someday the whole nation. And so, uh, uh, Councilman Member Clear, I, I just want to thank you for early on bringing this to our attention. Um, and others uh, who have now been on board with this so that we could see something that we hadn't seen before. I've appreciated the opportunity to visit with uh, most of you about this issue. And uh, again, tonight uh, is just a beginning uh, that this community can come together with its leadership uh, leading the charge to say, uh, let's do this together uh, to make uh, freedom for all. And so uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to this. Thank you. Does anybody have any comments before we proceed with the voting? Councilwoman Ortiz. Thank you. Papa Barry. That's all right. I like Topeka that. Dad. Don't call me Papa Bear. <laughs> <laughs> it was close. Just her. <laughs> um, I, I would like to say that I, I appreciate this coming forth, and I appreciate all the work that you've done on this. Um, the Department of, for Children and Families, um, we're dealing a lot with um, human trafficking in Pittsburgh area down, you know, down south. Um, and I'd like to see us maybe correlate with the state and all that we've been doing, because um, they're, they're, it's really, really big down there. Um, and I tell you what, you hear about it, but it's real. It's very real. Um, when you start working with it and, you know, and with the, the people and the children, um, I worked on a case where one of our children became a victim and then was part of that process and it's 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 so real and they don't they don't quite understand it and um, so I would hope we can pull in and, and um, I'll get you that Barry that information of some contact people that that work on it through the state because the more people we have the more resources <coughs> that we have the greater 
um, the progress. The good news is that we're working with the secretary right now on this and uh, have become very aware of the challenge that uh, mm -hmm. we have with foster care. And yeah. uh, it's time to quit pointing fingers at the Department of Children and Families and get behind and support them. Over 7,300 foster care kids uh, in Kansas that are in need of care, and we do not have nearly enough foster parents. Uh, this is part of combating human trafficking, mm -hmm. to really step behind and, and do what some of you in this room have already done, and that's step up to the plate uh, um, and be able to do that to, to uh, take care of these kids. Um, so, yeah, um, we appreciate what's being done with the department, and uh, we need to do it together. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Councilman Padilla. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to express my gratitude to everyone and to uh, Papa Barry. <laughs> I've never called him that when it was Safe Street. Thank but you. It, 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 I'm <laughs> sure you appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something that you know, we all know has existed for some time. Uh, we talk about it in, in our groups. We talk about it in our meetings. I think it's important that a concerted effort, an organized effort, brings, bring all those people together to get something done so that we're not working in different directions trying to accomplish the same goal. I think we'll be much more successful in that way. And I, I appreciate all the efforts that Councilwoman Clear and Councilmember Lesser and yourself and others uh, who are working behind the scenes to bring this about and bring it to our attention and so that we don't forget about it after today, that we continue. I'm glad to see that you have another follow-up event on Thursday and then anything after that that helps remind us of our efforts, I would appreciate and thank you again. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Hiller. I also want to credit you and, and, and your team. We all know what a wonderful job the rescue mission has done here in Topeka. And something that's really beautiful about the way the, your predecessors and you and, and your teams have managed the mission is that we've been so totally locally supported and totally focused on taking care of people who, who were here, both people who have lived here as well as people who have come or passing through or have come through. When you first told me about your vision for this project, my jaw dropped because here was this man who had been totally focused locally talking, me, talking to me about a national vision. And I know, I imagine that people will learn more about that when we do the announcement on Thursday. But that's one huge vision. Yet with human trafficking, to do it right, how could you not? Because for safety, sometimes people need to go away. We need to have safe places that aren't here for them to go away. And similarly, we know that, that people whom we treasure and have taken care of may be on the run and we need to be part of a bigger network to help find them and make sure that they are safe. And we know that, but the fact that your vision for this project is to look at the whole country is uh, amazing and thank you. Well, thank you. Okay, um, seeing that you have overwhelming support. I think that I will call the vote right now for the resolution. Councilwoman uh, Clear? To Moves to approve. Second. Councilman Lesser seconds. I think at this point we all vote. We have nine yes. Nine having voting, yes, it passes unanimously. May the Lord bless you all. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> After roasting, roasting my Topeka dad, um, <laughs> <laughs> we now move <laughs> to item C, resolution for the capital improvement plan of the clerk would read is a resolution introduced by City Manager Brooke Trout authorizing and adopting the 2019 to 2028 Capital Improvement Plan and the 2019 to 2021 Capital Improvement Budget and approving the project budgets attached. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor, Governing Body. Um, tonight, the staff has presented the CIP and CIB for your consideration. We've answered many questions over the last few weeks regarding the projects and the staff stands ready to answer any additional questions that may be presented tonight. We seek your approval of the presented CIP and CIB resolution. Mm -hmm. 
I'm looking to see if there's any questions. Yes, Councilman Emerson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, over the past couple of weeks, um, I've sent numerous questions to the staff, and, and they have responded. I, I appreciate that. However, there are, as, as staff is aware, uh, there are a couple projects with significant uh, price tags attached to them that I have some follow-up questions for, and I, I, I believe there's others here that may also have um, <coughs> additional questions before we <coughs> vote on this. Uh, with that said, I would like to move that we postpone this for two weeks, the action, this action item so that we have time to uh, ask the rest of our questions and get answers. Second. We have a motion uh, made by Councilman Emerson and we have a second by Councilwoman Ortiz to <coughs> delay for two weeks the discussion and the approval of the capital improvement plan. Are there any comments or discussion? Councilwoman Ortiz. Um, I would like to know or if we can get or is this I don't know. I don't. The questions that are being answered uh, asked is everybody getting answers to those questions? <coughs> um, I don't know. Which ones have, excuse me. I don't know which ones have been submitted to all. We have answered a number of questions, but it would not be difficult to forward those. Um, they were regarding the specific projects, understanding the projects, and so forth. I, I think it'd be great if we all could get the answers and the questions. That way, we're not mm -hmm. being repetitive or. If it sparks up another question, um, I, I would I would like to, to see that. Yes, we'll um, send that out tomorrow. Any other comments? We do have two individuals signed up for public comment on this item. The first person signed up to speak is Raul Muñoz. Hola, buenas noches. Buenas noches, ¿cómo está? I'm doing very well, thank you. Good, good. Um, well, uh, my name is Raul Muñoz, and um, I lived in uh, Topeka here for the last 30 years. Um, I love this town, I love this city, and I've, uh, I've represented um, as a boxer, as a Topeka boxer for the last uh, 20 years, but Today I'm here um, because uh, we do live on the uh, east part of town, um, on East 6th Avenue, and we have noticed that um, that we need a, a little bit more attention over there, more lighting. Uh, our sidewalks are are pretty pretty uh, damaged, and um, and just to see what. What can it be done? I mean, it's uh, we have our kids. Um, they're crossing the street, and sometimes they don't respect the pedestrian uh, uh, the signs, and they just, uh, especially the one on Sixth and uh, Sixth and Lake. If you if you're there, um, the the traffic is just heavy there. They don't respect that uh, sign. Um, and I, I see people crossing, they just don't respect the, the, the sign, they don't respect the people crossing the street. So I would really appreciate and take in consideration to uh, um, do a little bit about, you know, the East, East our, our part of town. So. Okay. Yes, it's all. Oh, ah, okay. Si. So he's saying it's all. <laughs> um, well, thank you for your comments. We appreciate it. I would invite you to, when the meeting is done, or actually once this is you know completed, yes. to talk to Dr. Jason Peak. He okay. can give you. He's right here, Mr. Peak. If you could raise your hand so that Mr. Munoz can identify you. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, Councilwoman, and he can talk to you about the plans that we have and maybe earmark some of those things in your areas and also talking with him would raise the concerns of the things and could tell you about solutions. Councilwoman Ortiz. Oh, also, I'm sorry, also, if you drive there about eight or nine o'clock at night, it's completely dark. I mean, it's just no lighting at all. And, and you know, I've been just 
when when you come in from uh, out of town and you come in through Sixth Street, that's the first <laughs> impression you get mm -hmm. from Topeka. It's dark. I mean, it's just you know, and that's uh, east part of town. I mean, it's not light at all. If, if you drive by there at nine o'clock, it's just completely dark. Okay. So, Councilwoman Ortiz. Thank you. Raul is one of my constituents. Um, he calls me probably several times a year. We're not we're not gonna say how several, but several. Um, there used to be um, a walkway, and what he's talking about, one of those lights there at Six and Lake, and they took it out, and they said we're not warranted for it anymore. I have turned in Rao's complaints constantly. Um, so if we can re-look at that, he is correct. Um, a lot of pedestrians cross um, um, from, six, um, from the south side going to the north side going to um, Salvation Army to eat or to the barbershop or wherever they're going. Um, and, and it's kind of weird because when we change the parking, we've also changed the, um, what do I want to say? We, we, we changed the view of oncoming uh, cars of coming. So if you're trying to pull out, if I'm north, trying to pull out going what east, it's very, very hard yeah. of, how, of how we've changed. They, they changed the parking to parallel, I believe. And that was done several years ago. Um, the city went in and did that. So if we can look at, if we can look at that, um, I've, I've sent um, stuff in to staff and they said it's not warranted, um, but Raul is correct. Um, it, it's dark through there and what's happened is um, on the building there um, at six and um, not your building, but the building across the street, mm -hmm. there was a light there that they were paying for. Okay. And so they turned that light off. But we still have another light that sets kind of back more towards the south. Okay. Um, and so uh, we just we just need to really, really look in there. And then we've never we haven't had money. And I think now we have a little bit of money. Um, um, so we need to put it on the light uh, list if in to see if we do have some more money right in there. But when those lights are out, because there's one. Um, they're not at the corner. They're the, the corner light that was being paid for, mm -hmm. they, the, they turned that off because the person that was paying for it didn't want to pay for it anymore. And if I'm not correct, if I'm correct, I think that was your, your um, business across the street from there yeah. that, that turned that off. Well, yeah, it was a business when went out of business and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we couldn't afford it anymore. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we had to turn um, off some lights that, you know, pretty much were pretty much uh, lighting, lighting up the whole, the light, whole light, area. Light, lighting right. up the whole area. And once we went out of business, boom, the whole thing went dark. Right. So, right. I mean, it's like uh, you look and see there's no street, you know, there's mm -hmm. no uh, mm -hmm. lights in the streets or anything. So, mm -hmm. Um, so I think a couple things have happened. You know, we've lost that. We need to relook and see what we can do. Uh, we need to see if it warrants for a pedestrian um, yeah. again. And then we also need to look at the the safety measures of because even when the bus comes, it's 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 terrible. They 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 pass through there because they cannot really see who's standing there, uh -huh. standing back from the street. So and if, and I'm sorry. And right now uh, we don't have a business, but we do live on the second mm -hmm. floor of the, the building. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just like, you know, we come there, uh, come to our house and it's like dark at night. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you mm -hmm. know, there's no light right. in the streets or anything, so. Right, well, we'll look at that. And then um, regarding the sidewalk, uh -huh. um, and Jason, are you taking all this down that I'm saying? Okay, <laughs> regarding the sidewalk, um, cause you're gonna have to watch the tape if not. Um, I was told, and I'll try to look for that email, that that is your business's sidewalk. So that is your responsibility okay. for that, that that's not, um, that's not city sidewalk. But okay. if we can look at it again, Jason, just to make sure. Uh, Rob, well, I mean, it's not just our sidewalk, but I mean, uh, you know, all up, all up on, on the street, I mean, you can see the sidewalks are just, you know. Absolutely. Just, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But I know yours are kind of cracked and yeah. right, right around there. And yeah. I was told that's, that's the business owners it, yes. that they're in front of. Um, so I just want to make sure I'm, I'm telling you right. Okay. And so, Jason, if, if you can look out in there. Um, now, the, one more thing, and I'll be through here, Mayor. Um, 
he has a really, really weird, um, what do you drain behind your business. You, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. Robert, right? Yeah, it is, and we we keep we we keep uh, getting billed for that. You know? Right, it just right. And I've asked staff to look at that, uh -huh. and I never really got a clarification on that. We just paid a uh, like a three hundred dollar bill for that drain. So and we're not even, you know. So I, if if we can get Mr. Munoz that um, those answers, and my, as well as myself, that would be great. Thanks for coming up, Rob. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Munoz. Thank you. Next person signed up to speak is Joseph Ledbetter. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> I'll be brief since there's a motion on the floor to continue this. I just want to make sure that I've entered into the record this letter from uh, the East Topeka Council, uh, which I helped draft. Uh, there's a number of us as members that are trying to promote uh, the east side, uh, which goes from Oakland all the way to High Crest and on out to the lake. So uh, this East Topeka interchange has been identified by this fairly large group as something that's of interest that we'd like to see progress and move forward. So we're asking that that funding be moved up on the capital uh, improvements uh, budget. And I will say that I've talked to three, it's three uh, lobbyist uh, different groups that work with the legislature about highways. And they're all telling me that next year there will be discussion about highway budgets and uh, getting those monies back into the highway system and that uh, possibly in 2000 or yeah, 2020, there will be uh, possibly a projects task force budget released. And uh, it's gonna be important that we have plugged our projects into that and that we have uh, put some skin in the game on these uh, designs. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, so we have a motion and we have a second to postpone this discussion for two weeks. <clears throat> Seeing no other comments, we proceed with the voting. We have nine yes. Nine having voting yes. The motion passes. This item is moved for two weeks from now. The next item was resolution for the CIP revenue bonds for the enterprise for the enterprise fund projects. If the clerk would read, D is a resolution introduced by City Manager Brent Trout, declaring the necessity to repair, alter, reconstruct, enlarge, or improve the city's water, water pollution, and/or stormwater utility system through improvement projects authorized by the resolution and providing notice of intention authorizing the issuance of revenue bonds in the manner required by KSA 10-1201 at C. City Manager. Uh, my assumption is based on the decision to postpone two weeks that you would like to do so with the same uh, purpose for this particular item. Yes, sir. That's is that a motion, Councilman uh, Emerson? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. I'd like to make the motion. We also postpone this. <coughs> we have a motion. Do we have a second? Councilwoman Clear seconds. We have Mr. Joseph Ledbetter signed up to speak. I'll pass, thank you. He passes. Do we have additional comments with regards to this issue? Councilwoman Ortiz. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Mr. Henderson, why do you want to postpone this? Um, this is also part of the capital improvement. I'm sorry, Your Honor, if I may. Yes. This is also Anderson. part of the capital improvement budget we're talking about. So. Uh, some of the projects we're talking about were on this this portion of the capital like right Yes, ma'am. All right. Made the second on that. Clear. Thank you. Clear. Sorry. I thought you said I need a second on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Seeing no comments, we proceed with the voting. We have nine yes. Nine have uh, nine have been voting yes. Uh, the motion passes, and this item will be deferred to follow also the CIP. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, council members, I would ask that if you could please, I know that we're currently working with Mr. Emerson, and we'll get the other council members the information that was passed to him before and to 
uh, yeah. Councilwoman Hiller on some of their questions. But um, if you have items, we really would like the time to be able to work through them and get thorough answers and then get those back out to everyone. So please provide that information if you haven't already. I know that some has been provided, but if you would, please provide that information so we can be ready for two weeks from now. Councilman Emerson. Thank you, Your Honor. And just a question for legal. Um, I'm always hesitant to send emails out to other council members, uh, thinking it might um, violate an Open Records or Open Meetings Act. But I don't have a problem with my questions and the answers being distributed to everyone. But is the easiest way, I mean, can we send questions to everybody? Or No, I, okay. would, I would advise against doing that, Council Member Emerson. I okay. Thank work you. through the manager. Yeah, Just, I was say work through the city manager, work through my office, uh, either myself or Mr. Gerber if you have questions, and uh, we'll get those answers and then we'll distribute them so then it's not an issue with regards to that. Thank you. Thank you. I was just going to emphasize just that, the importance of us going ahead and making use of city manager, especially when we're dealing with issues pertaining to staff. That way he can go ahead and, and as executive, he will allocate the staff and make sure that then we get that response that we need. So, all right. We now move to E, resolution on budget priorities, if the clerk would read. E is a resolution introduced by city manager Bert Trout, establishing the city's 2019 budget priorities. City manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, tonight, the budget priorities are presented for your consideration and approval. Before we proceed with discussion, we do have individuals signed up for public comment. I think that it would aid in the discussion if we hear them out. The first person signed up to speak is Mr. Luis Estrada. Slowly, I hear. Okay. All right. Thank you very much uh, for presenting this opportunity for me to speak. Um, I'm pretty much was going to echo everything that Mr. Munoz uh, came up here and said. I actually uh, have been working with him lately, and what's going around right now is something that uh, uh, we put together. Um, it was in Spanish originally because we were actually uh, trying to hear out what the majority of the Latino members of the East End of Topeka have to say in regards to what they think or is needed um, for that particular area of town. Um, on, on this particular document, it's, it's very simplified because I felt that would be the easiest way to get a, a feedback from them. So as, as you see, some of this is things that we are actually tackling or the city's actually tackling. Um, obviously, I know a lot of you from different boards and committees. Um, that I'm involved with, but more than anything, um, I wanted to make sure that I, I voiced my advocacy for the east end of, of town. Um, east Topeka is somewhere that I grew up in, and I feel very strongly that to make sure that they're not left behind. Obviously, the flagship project right now is the Washburn Tech East. Uh, is something that's going to be very needed on East Topeka, but as uh, Mr. Munoz uh, I made aware, uh, Sixth Avenue is kind of like a corridor that is traveled by a lot of people uh, that come into town, especially from Lawrence. Um, I know lately there's been a lot more cycling activity that way. Um, and I kind of like to see a lot more improvement as far as the aesthetics of uh, infrastructure there with sidewalks and guttering and things of that nature that uh, we have pedestrians that are taking advantage of a lot of the trails that are being built uh, in that end of town. So. Um, if you could take the time to read some of this, uh, the information, the contact information that's supplied is for Raul and his wife who uh, went around and took the time to uh, speak with a lot of the residents and business owners of the 6th Avenue corridor. Um, I myself will make my rounds eventually, but as you know, I'm involved with a lot, so uh, I'm taking my time making sure that I get them involved as well and they take the initiative. Uh, lighting is, I think, one of the big issues as he spoke about, not only um, in the 6th Avenue corridor, but a lot of those side streets. Um, that's a very much a safety issue. Uh, I think the police department would appreciate a lot more lighting in some of those areas as well. Um, and uh, that's pretty much all I have. Thank you for your comments. Councilwoman Ortiz. I just want to say, um, I'm trying to think what year it was, East Topeka South Neighborhood Improvement Association. We got funded for lighting and we went around and we had like 96 lights. 
but then the money, I don't know what happened, and then we got denied. So our, our NIAs are um, aware of that. If you, if you ever want to attend any of those, we have East Topeka North, East Topeka South, and they've, they've always asked for lighting. It's never been in the budget. We finally got some in the budget. Um, and so I know that they've looked at going out, and Raul has been to some of the meetings, um, and I know they've looked at going out and trying to look again. You're right. We do need a lot, lot, lot more. But um, I just want you to know that they have talked about it and it's been on their radar as well. All right. Well, thank I you. Think, thank you. It's time to flip the switch. <laughs> <laughs> you can't flip it if you don't have it. Uh, <laughs> any other questions? Thank you. Thank you very much thank for you. your comments, Luis. The next person signed up to speak in this item is Mr. Joseph Ledbetter. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Several weeks ago, I did comment on this, but I just want to reiterate uh, this first paragraph. Uh, talks about uh, setting priorities for the the staff and, of course, the city as a whole uh, as the governing body to focus on improving performance and cost effectiveness. Uh, there's a number of things and ideas that could start coming forward about how to make our uh, workforce more productive. And uh, I would encourage this body, if you do pass this, to set up, uh, put this into a budget, into a committee, maybe policy or one of the committees, and actually start looking at uh, productivity issues with, with staff and how repairs are made and timeliness of contracting, things that affect the overall budget, and, and have this actually, uh, you know, get reports from staff, question staff, a question the public, the public has ideas, and, and actually uh, get some findings, some findings of fact and, and uh, some recommendations to the, government, to the governance to actually implement uh, some of what you find and what you want to do. You know, and do this over maybe a four to five month period of time uh, where the public can uh, comment. Uh, the other part of this is section three, and I commented about this two weeks ago. It says continuing a commitment to developing neighborhoods, including but not limited to community policing efforts. Uh, certainly, I've worked with High Crest for the last five years very uh, strenuously to uh, improve that area. We've seen some improvements, uh, quite a bit actually. But community policing has been very important, High Crest. Uh, the next one, continuing to engage with neighborhoods to solicit and develop unique solutions to neighborhood specific issues. This is a big deal uh, because not every neighborhood is the same. Uh, just like you have certain problems uh, on East 6th, you have certain problems uh, on in Highcrest. Uh, the people on the ground know what they need best. Uh, it's not going to come out of a hierarchy. It's not going to come from a top-down approach. Uh, when these people tell you that certain things are needed in their neighborhoods, uh, which may include a newsletter, uh, you should find funding for those things because uh, certainly with Highcrest, that newsletter uh, encouraged people to clean their lawns, encouraged people how to write to their landlords. I, I wrote some of those articles to make sure that uh, uh, those problems with uh, a lot of those tenements were handled correctly. People didn't know they needed to put it in writing. We educated the public. Uh, we educated... Uh, Tenants that they also have a responsibility to clean their lawns and, and mow them. And uh, if you've driven through that, through Highcrest West this year, or recently, it, it's 100, well, it's really a lot more percent, maybe two to 300 percent better than it was at this time last year. Um, but that, that newsletter was very, was a very key role in how uh, the neighborhood officers communicated to uh, to the residents, and a lot of people really and you know liked getting it. Now, the point I'm making is, if there was a shortfall of a couple thousand dollars in a three hundred million dollar budget, I think we could have found that uh, for approximately fifty seven hundred residents of this city. Um, I know that one time there was a shortfall of four dollars, and the newsletter didn't go out, and I said I would have I would have given that to you. Uh, this is not to pick on people. It's simply to tell you that if you're going to pass these resolutions, I think staff needs to follow them. Uh, if it says continue engaging with neighborhoods to solicit, that means get, request, and develop unique solutions to neighborhood-specific issues. It's 
clearly says talk to the neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Ledbetter. These are the only two individuals signed up to speak at this point in time. I would see if the body has any comments. Councilwoman Clear. On line 70, is there an end to that or does it end with and? <laughs> I think we're missing some verbiage on line 70. English teacher. I think I can help you with it. Councilwoman Hiller. I think if people think back to what was handed out uh, a meeting or two ago, there was at some point in the red line version, you could see that what had been at the end of this um, was moved up to the whereas's. And I think it was the, the wording is still there verbatim. It just, when it got relocated. So delete 6970? Just delete, delete and exactly. semicolon and 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 mm -hmm. it's good. And period. Okay. okay, with that edit, any other comments? Council and Cohen. Thank you, Mayor. Um, let's see, it was line, uh, I see it's, it's number four, selected strategy investments towards quality of life. Isn't that something that JDO should be taking on instead of us? Does anybody have some history on that? Councilwoman Hiller. Well, it was one of the comments that I was going to make. Um, obviously, when you read through the list, the city has invested in all those to some extent. I personally felt much more comfortable with the word appropriate than adequate because we've never funded them totally and shouldn't expect to. And, and you're right, as we move on to Jado taking a stronger role in some of these, it's a matter of <coughs> partnering. I mean, we'll always be responsible for the river, but maybe not the park, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Okay. I Thank agree. you. Thank you for your comments, Councilwoman Hiller. And I would just state that I think that when we look at the issue of quality of life, I think that's something that's up to all of us. Quality of life could be defined as many things. I think that when you, when we just came down from the trail of campaigning, a lot of the things that we heard was that quality of life for many people was defined as us maintaining the roads, the way that, you know, so that it would be beautifying our roads. The other thing that was really considered under quality of life for our residents was blight in the neighborhoods. So I think that quality of life is something that applies to all of us. I just think that there is the quality of life issues that we have as a municipality. And then there's, of course, the economic development portion of the quality of life initiatives that would bring in and retain talent. Gotcha. Other comments, questions? Councilwoman Hiller. Thank you. When we, when we considered this before, I had some questions. I had some concerns about whether we should have as much verbiage as was in the proposal because we were moving toward a strategic plan, suggested that something more simple uh, which, which was done last year might be appropriate and I promise to work on those a little bit and send them out. And so if you saw it, um, Liz did send out two versions yesterday morning. If anybody didn't get a copy and wants a copy, I brought a couple of them in print. Does anybody need it? Okay. Um, I visited with the mayor as well, since she's leading the strategic plan um, efforts. She felt that, um, and don't correct me if I'm not quoting you, re reporting correctly, that that it was okay to have the verbiage as pro at the level that was proposed this year, that it, rather than being in conflict with the strategic plan, that it was okay as a segue okay. into that process that we will all be involved with in the, end, in the end of April. And with that, I am comfortable with going ahead with, with one. I, I stopped because there were a number of, of things about the phrasing that, that concerned me. Um, and, and still do, there's some redundancies in there and so on. But, it's a budget priorities thing, it's fine. What you have in the longer version of, of what I sent is, is a suggestion that if we go with this that we change just a couple of things. In item number two, um, there was a phrase, the first bullet said continue an active and strenuous recruitment of police officers and maintain an optimal level of officers. 
I felt that we should add firefighters to that in that we have really been focusing on a shortfall and recruitment strategies for both our police and our firefighters. So what you have is uh, just a two, three word change to include and firefighters and use the term personnel instead of officers in that one. Um, the next one, um, again, relating to fire, it would be the, it's the second bullet on the second page where the language that was proposed said set an action plan to improve cost effectiveness and service delivery in the fire department. My proposal would be to insert, set the master plan, including, in the same words, the action plan, in that we've talked so long about where the fire stations were going to be, where are we going to do ALS or not, and I would like it to be in our budget priorities that we make those decisions this year. And I think the chief has been working toward that. So I didn't feel that that was out of line, but instead accommodated something very important that we've talked about. Um, and then, and, and then in item number four, the issue that Councilman Cohen brought up where um, when there is discussion in the first bullet about selected strategic investments toward quality of life, where the proposed language said continue to evaluate adequate levels of support, my suggestion would be to substitute appropriate. I, I think that gives a stronger message that we're working that out and deciding where our role should be, not to just do everything. Um, if there are questions or conversation with me about those items, I would entertain them and then at whatever point is appropriate, I would be happy to move this version as amended to be adopted. Councilwoman Clear. Um, I think if we change on line 26 officers to personnel, you're saying two different things. Do you want to recruit the officers and the firefighters, or you don't want to maintain the personnel of the entire department. I think those are two different, they're two different things. If I could reply. Councilwoman Heller. Would you then think it, I was trying to make it one word. <laughs> if you think it would be more correct to say officers and mm -hmm. firefighters, I'm fine with that. Yep. That's I think it would take that as a, as a friendly amendment. Councilman Mays. Just to speak on that, I think that <clears throat> personnel is adequate because there are a lot of uh, essential personnel within the police department uh, that are not necessarily officers. And, and I'm thinking of mental health professionals and, and folks that go along with it that they also need an, an optimal level of staffing as well. Councilwoman Clear. But I don't think that's been our concern in the past. It's been the officers. I don't think we have any concerns with other personnel. Am I wrong? In terms of recruiting, I think that's true. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to say recruit, it was the officers. If I might. The, the wording in here says maintain an optimal level of personnel. It doesn't say recruit. It just says maintain. Thank you, Councilman Mays. <laughs> Any other comments or questions with regards to the amendments that Councilwoman Hiller has provided to the body with regards to the priorities? So what did we decide on? So, that, that, so at this point, do we want to have the motion, the initial motion withdrawn and then have Councilwoman Hiller make an, a, a motion to proceed with her amendments? Or would we like to vote up and down the first motion and then proceed with Councilwoman Hiller? So who start? Who did the motion? I did. Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Councilwoman Hiller, would you like to rescind your initial motion so that you could make a motion to adopt um, your amendments? Because we discussed one of them, shall I just make the motion and then clarify the amendments? That would be that would be adequate. Okay. I would move to approve the resolution um, as presented with, with one change. The, the amendments would be on, on in number two to insert and firefighters um, in two places um, so that it reflects recruitment of police officers and firefighters 
and an optimal level of, of officers and firefighters. Second Amendment is on page two, the second bullet, inserting the words uh, master plan including so that we are doing a master plan for fire, not just an action plan for cost effectiveness. And third, on, I, on line number 55, continue to evaluate appropriate levels of support for quality of life and so on. And period on 69. And, and, and elimination exactly. of Exactly. And eliminate and at the end. OK, so the first motion was revoked by Councilwoman Hiller. Now we have a new motion, which is the adoption of the amended, the, the document as with the amendments as presented by Councilwoman Hiller. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Now we're open to discussion. Councilman Emerson. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Councilwoman Hiller, I hate to put you through this, but would you mind just reading so that we're very clear on what we're saying? Would you mind just reading those three lines with your insertions, please? The, um, there is only one change from what you have in front of you. So if you want me to read that when that is line 26, and, and it would say firefighters and maintain an optimal level of officers and firefighters. That is the only change from what you have in front of you. This is the, I'm sorry, this is the document you handed out? Correct. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm looking at it on my computer, so it's the old, uh, I have the original version, I'm sorry. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Lines 20, 25 and 26, and line 34, and line 55. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions on the priorities? We have a motion. We have a second. The approval of this motion would allow us to adopt the budget priorities with the amendments presented by Councilwoman Hiller. We now proceed with the voting. It's just the amendments. Just the amendments, yeah. yes. Oh. We have nine yes. Nine having voting yes. All of the amendments in the priority the priority document have been approved. We now proceed to vote on the on the resolution itself as amendment as as amended. As amended. <laughs> so so Councilwoman Hiller makes the motion. Councilman Cohen seconds. Seeing no additional comments, we now proceed with the voting. We have nine yes. Nine having voting yes, the resolution passes. We now proceed with item F, ordinance on the IBC, if the clerk would read. F is an ordinance introduced by City Manager Brent Trout adopting the 2015 International Building Code and Local Amendment, amending City of Topeka Code sections 24010, 142010, 142030, and 142060, and repealing original sections. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Governing body staff has provided a number of responses to you regarding questions uh, related to the administrative process and the, that we currently utilize and also the technical issues that for each of the proposed code approvals. Um, we are prepared to answer any more questions that may exist um, and we request approval of the 2015 International Building Code as presented for adoption. Thank you very much. What is the pleasure of the body? Councilwoman Clear. This could be, we could either have discussion <laughs> prior or you could make a motion in a second and we go into okay, discussion. No, um, Whatever I'll your pleasure. To approve. So we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second for the purposes of discussion? Sorry. We have a second for the purposes of discussion. Discussion is now open. Councilwoman Clear. I just want to say, I read through this and I, every question I thought of, you guys had provided an answer. I was really impressed at the depth this went, so I just want to thank you for that. Any other comments or questions? <laughs> Councilwoman Hiller. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to thank the staff first. I had a lot of questions. 
we we did a deep dive through it had had a meeting where we we went through a lot of things what has drilled down is um, that th there there were a lot of outlying issues that weren't addressed in these changes and, and staff correct me if I'm wrong but I've been assured that there will be a review um, of the the staff and the and the the automatic the duties separation between staff and boards there have been some issues with our small businesses and so on on that that the that the that the role of the board's role in composition will be addressed after this vote also i had concerns that the energy efficiency standards were deleted in their entirety um, much upgraded from 2006 of course i've been assured that uh, those will be addressed in total and the sustainability board will be engaged in that and third, um, the building conservation code that we have that we learned about last time is a 1997 version and only available in one paper copy. And um, I have been assured that that will be reviewed as well to see if we even still need it because of the upgrades in the code that we're going to adopt tonight, as well as um, it's now called the existing housing code and, and just to see where we are with that. So I really appreciate that. With all that, then, um, I have two small amendments to propose, and I did hand them out at the beginning of the meeting. Um, may need to do them one at a time, but they, they really are very small. The first one on line 15 of the IBC um, makes reference in the Board of uh, Building and Fire Appeals to um, appointment of uh, nominations by the mayor and confirmed by the council. Um, in 2011, the, the council updated TMC 2.05.010, and it lays out more detail in terms of the procedures of nominations for a whole string of boards, including building and fire appeals. And so my suggestion on that is to simply delete the language by the mayor and confirmed by the council and instead substitute per TMC 2.05.010. The other one that I had was that this, the staff in lines, in, in, in the sequence between lines 600 and 603, had added a new line that reads, a permit shall not be valid until the fees prescribed by law have been paid, nor shall an amendment to a per permit be released until the additional fee has been paid. When that happened, the, the sentence before it had been there before, and it says all fees owed by the applicant shall be paid in full prior to issuance of any type of building permit. So the new sentence took care of that and elaborated on it further. And my suggestion simply was that the old sentence be deleted. I have run these by legal. They don't have any problem with those two changes. So either individually or together, I would propose these two amendments. I think it would be safe to, uh, 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 at the same time, they're rather minor. I would so move. Councilwoman Clear. I have a question. I was going to look this up myself, but I'll just ask you. So on, when you say per TMC 2.05 or whatever, where is that at? Where would you find that? When you go, when you go into the municipal code. See, I don't like that. I, if I got this and I was reading that and I'd say, oh, heck, now I've got to go somewhere else and look something else up. Yeah. I would rather, it's a, it's a sentence. I will leave the sentence in. Councilwoman Hiller. The, um, well, I printed it out because that's what I do. I don't like looking at it online either. But the procedure in, it, it, that is pretty standard for legal. Rather than repeating something that's someplace else, they prefer to make reference to, to have it in just in one place. The language in 2.05.010 says, the council is hereby authorized to promulgate appropriate rules and regulations for such boards, commissions, and authorities. Skips on down, no city employee shall be appointed to any board, commission, or plural authority unless the appointment is specifically authorized by ordinance. Um, otherwise, unless, unless otherwise provided, all members appointed to a board, commission, or plural authority shall be residents of the city. Then it goes on for the procedure and says the mayor shall notify council members 30 days in advance of vacancies occurring on such bodies, shall solicit nominations from the council for filling such positions, and shall appoint members to such bodies from those nominated by the council. 
In the event no nominations are forthcoming, the mayor shall make such appointments as are in the best interest of or will best serve the mission of the board, commission, or authority. All appointments must be confirmed by the council. Unless provided for otherwise in this code, members will be appointed for a term of two years and shall not serve beyond the end of their appointed terms. That is a whole lot more language than, <laughs> than the mayor approved by the council, and that's why I made that But reference. is all of that relevant? Yes, because that is our uh, master For the ordinance. building and fire? Apparently. For all of them. It lists, it applies to Human Relations Commission, Electrical Appeals, Plumbing Appeals, Mechanical Appeals, Building and Fire Appeals, Zoning Appeals, Citizen Advisory Council, Civil Service Commission, the Planning Commission, um, the Boards and Trustees of Police and Fire Pension Funds, the ADA Council, Sustainability Board. Um, um, Council McClare. Can you not leave that sentence in there and then put C... As pursuant something, to. Something, yeah, as pursuant to. And then if they want more information, they can look it up. I'll defer to legal on that. Okay. Actually, Councilmember Hiller is correct that we are trying to make references to the particular TMC as we go through and make some of these new amendments. Um, and that is a lot more elaborate. And we don't want to regurgitate it all, but we want to make a quick reference back to it. So, um, I just think people, they're not going to read it. They're not going to go look it up and read it. Council Member Claire, yeah. um, one of the reasons why we do that is just so they, they aren't in conflict with each other. For instance, when we're going through the Title V ordinance, we're referring everything back to 5.05 .05 in, in the hearing piece because there are so many different hearing provisions in there that they all conflict with each other. So if you draw everybody back to one spot, they go back to one spot, it's one type of hearing process, and it's the same for how you nominate. You know, I think that's point. great if you have the other spot, but not, you don't have all that stuff in front of you to you know, look at. Councilwoman Hiller. I, I agree with you as a rule, but I'll, I'll tell you that one of the things that caught my attention, of course, I've been on the council through this time, was when when the charter ordinance was upgraded, the staff went through as bit by bit with the council to um, reconcile our various ordinances with the charter. And w I knew that um, what, what caught my eye in this language was it said should be appointed by the mayor and approved by the council. And something that I knew had been built in was that, was that the council was supposed to be solicited for nominations. And without that language in this section, somebody might never look and might not know. And so it was in discord and could have caused confusion in that way. OK. So at this point, we have two amendments to vote on. The first <coughs> one would be to add the the ordinance that it falls under, and then the second one would be to eliminate the first sentence that had a little bit of redundancy in the paragraph outlined by Councilwoman Hiller. Um, there's no other co comments or questions. We proceed with the voting. We have nine yes. Nine having voting yes. The amendments are approved. At this point in time, we have in front of us the IBC with the amendments for your approval. Seeing no comments, I would entertain a motion. Who's made the motion over there? Councilman Lesser makes the motion to approve. The IBC has amended. Oh. She had a motion on the table of recommending we approve it. Approval, but it never got seconded. Discuss did? Yes, it did. Uh huh. And then we amended oh, it. Okay. So then at this point in time, we have the motion and the second, and all we need to do is to vote. <coughs> we have nine yes. Nine having voting yes. The IBC ordinance is approved. We now move to item G, ordinance of the International Fire Code. 
if the clerk would read. G is an ordinance introduced by City Manager Brent Trout adopting the 2015 International Fire Code and Local Amendments, amending City of Topeka Code <coughs> Section 1440.010 through 1440.050 and 1441.10 and 120, repealing said original sections and creating new section 1441.15. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the same comments apply to the fire code. We have it presented for your approval tonight. What is the pleasure of the body? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second by Councilwoman Clear. <coughs> Do we have discussion on this item? Seeing no discussion, um, we will proceed with the voting to approve the International Fire Code. Ms. Ortiz. We have nine yes. Nine having voting yes. The ordinance passes. We now move forward to item H, ordinance of the life safety code. H if the clerk would read. Sorry. H is an ordinance introduced by city manager Brent Trout concerning adoption of the 2015 life safety code, amending city of Topeka code section 1445.010 and repealing said original section and repealing section 1445.020 <coughs> in its entirety. City manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is also presented, the life safety code is presented for adoption. I guess the last comment I'll have as we begin this process is that obviously this has been a lively discussion re relative to the considerations of these codes. I think it's been very good in a lot of ways from the standpoint of it's um, made us reach out to the business community, those that are doing building. We've had a lot of good discussions. Uh, it's opened doors in areas and now has uh, started a continued conversation that we've had. Uh, Mr. Faulkner had a good meeting with the Small Business Administration and tends to uh, development folks and they're working at uh, continuing that discussion on a regular basis. And so I think that uh, that has been a positive outcome of the difficulty that we had initially of finding our, our foot, our fit, feet underneath us relative to this issue. So thank you for that. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Councilman Cohen seconds. Do we have discussion? Seeing none, um, is there, uh, we proceed with the voting. We have nine yes. Nine having voting yes, the motion passes. I'm extremely proud of the work that staff has done with all of this. Thank you, City Manager Trout for your leadership and to all the departments that were really involved in getting this going. When, like city manager said, we certainly had some pretty heated discussion when when some of these items came about. There was a lot of passion and about a, a lot of concern to make sure that we had good conversation. And I think that we are now with a better understanding on why and how we have a delay sometimes in approving some of these changes, um, how we go back to our community and we do this. And this really has been an exercise of us working together and I feel like because of all the work that you all put, us, us as council members now have a much better and deeper understanding on how these regulations are working for our community and so that we can advocate what our business is. So thank you very much for all that you've done. We now move to announcements. If the clerk would read the preliminary agenda. On the prelim agenda, we have two proclamations next week. Uh, the first one is Sexual Assault Awareness Month and the second is Fair Housing. We have a presentation on the downtown plaza. We have a noise exception on the consent agenda along with a special event for the uh, 2018 German Fest. For non-action items, we will have a discussion on the Quinton Heights Still Neighborhood Plan. We will have a discussion on agenda contents order. And then we will have a discussion on the extension of the city retailer sales tax. City Manager. Mayor, the only item that I have is if there are other council members that would like to speak Thursday at the press conference, uh, please contact me. We're finishing up the agenda and speakers list relative to that. So if you would like to make a few comments, I have uh, Councilman Lesser and also Councilman Clear at this point. Um, so, but if you do want to, please let me know so I can add you to the speakers list. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to extend my, my, my thanks to the members of the military community 
Last week, we had a fabulous Military Relations Council meeting. It was wonderful that we recognized all of our service members, not just our military personnel, but our fire individuals and our police uh, staff as well that do so much for our community. And it was a great moment of pride when we were recognizing all of the people who have served our nation to have our city manager there and stand up to be recognized as well. Um, that was a great event. Um, in addition to that, I want to congratulate Fellowship Bible Church for their successful launch of the church at, over at NetReach. Um, at Highcrest, it was a, a beautiful event. I, For those of you that were there, I got a chance to look at the run-through of the message. Pastor Sublet is funny. <laughs> um, so congratulations over there. It's just beautiful to see what's been happening. And then finally, just wanted to again extend my appreciation to the members that were today at the mayor's domestic and sexual violence task force we have some pretty meaty discussion there has been uh an increase in attendance so much so that we had to move our our meeting from the original location i'm excited that the firefighters are also interested in being part of this task force and we are having some really meaningful discussions right now and the, the last thing that I will say is that as, as, as mayor of the city, I've taken the, the initiative to really speaking with every single person in the city that I can talk with. And one of the biggest blessings, sometimes we, we work with a lot of individuals and, and people look at us like we lack humanity because we have the roles that we have and we encounter some pretty difficult conversations. I often tell people that it's really interesting what happens once you get elected to sit on this bench. Um, there's an immediate entitlement sometimes to speak to you as if you don't have any worth or dignity. And sometimes that happens to our staff. But I tell you what, guys, if you have the opportunity to go and have lunch with the ladies at the prison, at the Shawnee County Annex, um, it was beautiful. There was more humanity in those ladies and more sincerity um, that I've seen in many people sometimes. Um, not this group, because this group is awesome. I will say that, and I always say that. Um, and not, I'm not just saying that in jest. I always praise all of you guys. But it, it was an amazing experience to sit down with these ladies who've had a challenge in their life and, and that they've not lost the hope of a better future. They have not lost the hope of being engaged in their community. They have not lost the hope of what tomorrow is going to bring. Um, Barry Feeker is part of that. Um, they have an amazing group of people that are talking to them, filling them with inspiration, talking to them about faith. Um, and just, it's an amazing thing. So if you do have the opportunity, I would recommend that you all contact Rich Christie and have a life-changing experience because it's absolutely beautiful. So thank you to all of those ladies um, that gave up their time and opened up their hearts because it was a moving experience. Councilman Cohen. Thank you, Mayor. Um, could we clarify the press conference date and time? It's Thursday at 11, and it was at the Law Enforcement Center, right? Yes, correct. Okay. It's at 11 a.m. at the Law Enforcement Center. Okay. Okay, and we'll be there for that. Um, I also wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the house that they're going to be giving away over in... It's just outside of my district. It's just south of Miller's Glen, if you guys have ever been by there. Drive down Indian Hills Road and just look off to the west, and there's a brand new house on the corner. Um, that house is put together by Drip A Construction, and all of the, the subs, uh, subcontractors volunteered their services as well as the general contractor. The city, <laughs> the city um, waived the building fee so they could do construction there. And um, this is going to be a free home. You're going to need to buy a ticket, a raffle ticket for $100, and I see that they're on sale right now. So if you're interested in a $400,000 home, um, oh, something else I wanted to say is I heard today that one of our local uh, furniture uh, stores is going to be furnishing the house also. So this is a real community effort um, here in Topeka. Um, yeah, it was going to be about a $400,000 house, and um, every, all the funds raised are going to be given to St. Jude. So hope you guys get out there and buy a ticket. We're going to be buying a ticket. 
Um, Where will you get those at? Um, if you just Google um, Dream Home Giveaway, and it'll take you right to the St. Jude site, and you can buy your tickets. Tickets are $100. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councilman Lesser. Councilwoman Hiller. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you for <coughs> saying a few words and taking the moment about Linda Brown today. I... I, I mourn her passing, but celebrate her life so much, and I um, think it's a time that that all of us, you know, we know that things are bubbling up around town anyway to to engage and advance the agenda that Brown v. Board started, that that little girl was the icon for her as a as a child and an adult, and so um, it, it's it's sobering but heartening as well. That we've got work to do, and just thank you, Linda. Thank you for, for your life. Um, wanted to thank <coughs> staff again for all the work on codes and CIP. We also had our first hearing, uh, committee hearing about the tax increment financing in this past week. So it's been a busy week for deep dives in policy and just thanks to everybody that's helped out on that. Um, on a little bit more fun angle, I have, I have show and tell to pass around uh, to my colleagues and I have some extras for the public. Um, the District 1 Crime Summit is this Saturday, and um, as we met, I just checked to, to make sure I had the LEC down on my calendar. Two of my different neighborhood folks finished flyering their neighborhoods. The entire district has been flyered on foot by residents of District 1, and I'm really proud of that. I really appreciate the police's help. Um, I got to see the final version of an FAQ set, commonly asked questions. <laughs> that Officer Wall has done for the summit. We'll be releasing that. We've got six classes. We've got interaction with the officers. Really excited about Saturday morning. If there is a blizzard, watch the TV. I got that question today, too. But we're thinking everybody's going to be just fine. And last but not least, it is tulip time, and uh, despite the way it looks outside. Apparently, the tulips themselves are late, and so Lake Shawnee's tulip time has been, from, has been postponed from the 8th of April till the 22nd, their big all-day celebration. Meanwhile, Ward Mead is full of, of tulips that haven't quite bloomed as well, but tulip time will nonetheless start on the 5th, and for the second year, um, we will have um, tulips at twilight. And instead of just being two days, tulips at twilight is going from the... Um, the, the 6th of April all the way through the 15th. And if you didn't see it, it is amazing. Go by yourself and be in awe, but if you can, take kids and people that don't get out much because it is magical. <coughs> and when you look at those tulips at twilight, there's a, I gave you one poster just to show and tell a little bit. But when you see those big tulips, those are made out of, of dime store angel wings. The, um, the little, the lilies of the valley, the ones that look like lily, lily of the valley, are made out of little, little plastic cups with LED lights in them. Volunteers have made everything that's there out of just household <coughs> items for it's the beautiful. most part, and it is magic. Okay. So uh, just a shout out to, to all the Word Meet volunteers and encourage you all to go. Thank you. Councilwoman Clear. Councilwoman Ortiz. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I don't see Chaz in the <coughs> city leave. He did a great job at Garfield Easter egg hunt. He did an excellent job, and um, there was a, a lot of kids and adults there. It was very windy, but he did an excellent job, and I just wanted to tell him publicly, well done. Um, do we have a smoke alarm update? Anybody? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll wait till next week. Um, I see the fire marshal. Did he leave too? Okay. Yeah. I gave him a report to run some names for me, so we'll we'll do that. You have a week to get your call in for your smoke alarms. And um, on the Jude Dream Home, I hope we can get some smoke alarms in there. You know, I, 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 can we do that? Okay. Can can you handle that? One of the questions that I did receive on that was, why are they selling only so many tickets? I, I heard they were selling only so many tickets, and people were kind of disappointed in, in that. So um, I think they want to buy more tickets. I, I don't know. For, it's for a good cause. But um, anyway, um, there was a lot of Easter egg hunts and a lot of fun this weekend, and, and I thought that was really, really awesome in spite of, in spite of our weather. Thank you.
Next is Councilman Emerson, also known as Tonio Henderson. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just to uh, repeat what Councilwoman Hiller already said, the Tulip Time Festival at Lake Shawnee, which was scheduled to be this weekend, has been moved to Sunday, April 22nd. So if you go to Ward Mead Park this weekend, it'll probably be there, but save your money and go out to District 4 on the 22nd. The donation only. Okay, it. okay. Well, <laughs> dine and, and in, in the many restaurants we have out there, District 4 way there on the 22nd. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Padilla. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just two things. One, a uh, reminder also that this <coughs> coming Saturday, the Topeka Police Department uh, is conducting their Citizens Academy, and they will have the participation with their, uh, I can't remember the acronym now, for the uh, live, for the Milo, Milo. Milo. okay, uh, simulated uh, firearms training. And if you have the chance to stop out there, I know that uh, the staff down at the Police Department training will take your name, just call down there, give them your name, and they'll give you the details of the time and where to go to, to attend. And just, I'd like to make a comment to, and thank you to Mr. Estrada and Mr. Munoz. I appreciate you coming in and speaking on behalf of your community on that side of Topeka. Sometimes we don't get enough representation from that side of, side of town, and I don't know for what reason, maybe they don't feel comfortable coming in here and speaking, but I appreciate you taking the time to come down here and do that, sir. Thank you. Councilman Mays. Uh, I'll be real brief. Um, my nine-year-old uh, son, Winston, has been watching the council meetings at home. He asked me to say hello. So I just <laughs> thought I'd say hi. Hi, buddy. <laughs> hi, Winston. We all say hi to yeah. you, bud. Yeah. <laughs> Councilwoman Ortiz wanted to add something. I did. Um, since Jason Peake is taking notes, I dodged five potholes in the going to court on Monday. Five. Now, don't ask me how many I hit. I will bring my bill, okay, because my car is out of alignment. But we've got to do something about that. That is our responsibility. City Manager, you can take that note as well. I know we were supposed to be putting a plan together. I've been screaming that for years. We've got to work fast and get it somewhere in there. Because when you are on your way like me driving at the last minute trying to get to court and those oh. potholes are full of water that staff did a great job of filling the U part but the, the side towards the courthouse is, is not not good at all um, it's gonna be I'm gonna be this is the third time I've done something to my car and and I say that because I know People out there say, well, you know, you, you would have your car fixed. I, I can't. I can't. But I am reporting it. I am reporting it on this day. Thank you. All right. We now proceed. Oh, no. Councilman, no, you started. We now proceed with public comment. The first person signed up to speak is Mr. Steve Mills. Madam Mayor, Council, uh, thanks for uh, taking the time to visit with us today. My name is Steve Mills. I am the Executive Director of Talk Topeka. It's Danette Wallace, my Associate Director. Um, I'm a lifelong Topekan. I love Topeka. Um, some of you I know, some of you I don't. Some of you have known me, well, at least one of you has known me since I was a baby. <laughs> but that said, um, we, we love Topeka, and our, uh, our city has questions from time to time. And sometimes when you have questions, there's a comfort level. Sometimes it, 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 it seems to be an easy situation to go directly to the city council and ask a question. Other times, it's easier to Ask, please excuse me, I had massive mouth surgery yes, yesterday. <laughs> yes, he did. Um, so this is a little painful, but <laughs> necessary. Um, so we, we, we came up with this Talk to Pika concept. Um, basically what we do is we do a weekly show uh, talking with a city leader, 
someone in the city. Doesn't necessarily have to be a city council member. Doesn't have to be the mayor. It could be you know business someone, owner. a business owner, a Curtis Pitts, someone like that that's doing something in the community um, to help the community thrive. Um, we also have a daily component that we will be adding to that as well. If you go to the website talktopeka.com um, or, or talktopeka.org, um, you see tons of things, including uh, show archives. There's a, a, a link there for the city of Topeka. So when you click on that link, everything that has anything to do with the city of Topeka, go Topeka 712 uh, uh, Innovations, the whole thing. I mean, this is a, the one website that I could find that I could link everything from the city of Topeka in one place because there's not one website that does that. Um, so we felt like that, that was a need. Um, Topeka News, you'll notice that if there's anything that's happening, fires, kidnappings, those things, automatically RSS feeds directly to this page. It automatically notifies people. Um, there's a, a feature here for school cancellations and closings that, um, that I worked with a company to, to create. Um, basically what the software does is rather than a school district calling the television station and the television station having to wonder whether, you know, someone has hijacked the code, they, they sign up here, they register, they say, okay, hey, school's closed, and it automatically sends the information to all the different media outlets into the city, and it can be used not just for schools, it could be used for Parks and Rec, it can be used for just a way for people to know, hey, this stuff is closed, the mall's closed, that type of a thing. You saw, well, one minute. Um, one of the more important things is a community spotlight. Uh, we spotlight, we did a community spotlight this month with Dr. Bronew, USD 501. Um, we have some other spotlights set up as well. And um, if you look at the front of the page, one of the things that we did spotlight was uh, Linda Brown, who, you know, passed away, obviously, as you discussed, at the age of 76. The reason that we bring this to your attention is just that, you know, we, we're committed to serving Topeka. Um, this is our home. This is going to continue to be our home. And we just hope that you'll, um, excuse me, take a, take a look at the site and uh, let us know what you think. And we hope to be able to work with you um, in the coming days and months as we do have a meeting to visit with the city uh, manager as well. And, and I just want to say our community is diverse. And that's as evidence of the council itself. We want to show that diversity through Talk Topeka. Thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The next person signed up to speak is Danette, which was already here. You got another four minutes if you want it. Can we get extra, extra time? Uh -huh. you, you will get four minutes if you have anything that you would like to add. Sure. Since you signed up. We <laughs> did um, as I was saying, um, Talk Topeka is a nonprofit organization. We're not here um, to get rich, any of that. What we want to do is show the diversity of the city. We are aware of Talk About Topeka. We are aware of Chris Schultz. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel or take anyone's place. What we are trying to do is show the different sides of of Topeka. There are so many things that are going on in this city right now. So many situations. So I mean so many different communities that need to be shown as Topeka. We are a multicultural uh, city, and I just feel like there's information out there that we all can share with each other, and that's what Talk Topeka is about. We want to be a hub for the city. We want to be a hub where people can go and learn what maybe I won't go to uh, Councilwoman Hiller's you know, district, but it doesn't mean I don't need to know what's going on there. Um, same thing with all of your districts. We can be a hub to put out information that can get to all races, all cultures, all environments, all sides of town. And that's what we want to do. We want to be that hub. And we also want to help you all disperse information. We want to help get information out where we can come on site and do some interviews or do some videos of different organizations that provide resources in the city just so people know what's out there. And so by us being a nonprofit organization, what we want to do is give back to the community. As we get sponsors, as we get donors, as we get people to interview, whatever money we raise or collect, outside of um, administration costs, of course, we want to <coughs> sow that money back into Topeka. I'm so proud of her. <laughs> <laughs> 
So <laughs> you mentioned a couple of things. You mentioned potholes. You mentioned. Yeah. I mean, we're basically we love our city, and so basically what we want to do is is we want we will probably present opportunities for sponsorships throughout the throughout these segments, and outside of admin fees because obviously we all have other employment and you know we just would pay an admin or what have you. We're going to give that money back to the city. Yeah. We want to help fix potholes. We want to put playgrounds. In, 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 in schools and in churches and, and do the things that this city needs. Yeah. Because, I mean, we understand that, you know, you're talking about the budget right now. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, this my eyes is streamed because of the teeth that they took out. <laughs> you're talking about budgets and those types of things. And we want to be able to supplement those things. And that's what we want to give back to our city. Yeah. Um, you know, 40 years strong. Yeah. And... I love Topeka. I couldn't imagine. I mean, the times that I've moved away, you know, being in a management position with Cumulus and getting promoted to corporate and what have you, I couldn't imagine not ever coming home. And now that I have the opportunity to be here, my mom's elderly, um, this is a good opportunity. And we really want to just give back to the entire city. The entire city. This weekend, I don't know if you all know, there were four churches that came together to do an Easter egg hunt, and we were on site. They had over 600 kids. They gave out over 7,000 eggs. That's something Topeka needs to know about. That's an accomplishment. One, our churches are working together. Um, and then organizations that are working together. So there's a lot of information out there to be given. We, we respect uh, talk about Topeka. We're not enemies. We just want to share it from a different perspective and a different point of view. That's it. Okay. That's Thank it. you. Thank you for your Thank comments. You. The next person signed up to speak is Ms. Oshara Misha. Mish yeah, Oshara Misha. It's Mishra. It wasn't spelled right here. She, she went. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Ms. Oshara. I am so glad to be here with you all this evening. And um, I do want to preface it by saying that I, too, am from East Topeka. And um, I'm glad that Luis spoke about East Topeka and what we need over there and how things are going and how we can all speak for ourselves and our community. Um, I want to thank you all for um, for showing up in the community, and I really appreciate that. And I just want to um, ask you ask ask you as you show up to show up with um, eyes of the people that are talking to you, if you can, um, to hear the voices of grassroots um, people coming up and organizations. And I know that you all have a job to do and you all have agendas and you all have plans that you have, you know, before you that you have to follow. But I ask you to hear the voices that are coming before you. And um, thank you for, for doing that also. And then I ask you to continue to do that. Um, I just want to, um, yeah, that's basically what I want to say. And I want to reiterate that and just thank you all for just being here and thank you for hearing us. and. And I'm glad to know that I, as a citizen, have the opportunity to come before you and just say thank you and just, you know, be able to say hear us and thank you for everything. Thank you. That's all. Yeah, thank you, Oshar. Great to see you walking without the cane. I know. I feel so bad. Thank you. <laughs> This uh, concludes our public comments section. We do have the need to recess into two executive sessions tonight. Um, if the city attorney would read the parameters of the first executive session. The motion is to recess into executive session for a period of time not to exceed 30 minutes for consultation with the city's legal counsel to discuss attorney-client privilege matters regarding litigation involving the city as justified by KSA 75-4319B2. In order to aid the discussion, the following individuals should be present. Members of the governing body, City Manager Brent Trout, Deputy City Manager Doug Gerber, Financial Administrative Services Director Nikki Lee, Chief of Litigation Shelley Starr, and myself. No action is anticipated to be taken when the open meeting resumes in the governing body chambers. Okay, we have an, ex session, uh, an executive session not to exceed 30 minutes. We have, we have a motion by Councilman Cohen, a second by Councilman Emerson. 
We now proceed with the vote. We have nine yes. Oh, yeah. Nine having voting <laughs> yes. The executive <laughs> session will convene after a five minute break for the body as the room is emptied. <laughs> <laughs> executive session no action has been taken if the city attorney can read we have another short session in which we don't expect to have any action taken city attorney the motion is to recess into executive session for a period of time not to exceed 10 minutes to discuss confidential employment matters pertaining to non-elected personnel as justified by KSA 75-4319 b1 in order to aid the discussion the following individuals should be present Members of the governing body, City Manager Brent Trout, Human Resources Director Jackie Russell, period. All of those in favor so. to have an executive session not exceeding 10 minutes? <laughs> okay, we don't even have a motion. Do we have a motion? Oh, I'm sorry. So moved. Emerson makes the motion. Cohen seconds. All those in favor, raise your right hand. <laughs> All opposed, same sign. Okay, we now <clears throat> go into executive session. The meeting has been uh, the meeting is, has concluded. There has been no actions taken. This meeting is adjourned.